I'm delighted uh, to welcome Bertram Bodson, Chief Digital Officer of Novartis, uh, who has been there uh, for over two years now. We would really love to hear, Bertram, from you what COVID-19 has done to your digital transformation at Novartis uh, over the last few months, and actually what you think might be happening uh, in the future as a result. So COVID has been a massive accelerant uh, in that context. Nobody asked for that crisis, obviously. Uh, but we've probably done in the past uh, three, four months what we would have done over the next uh, couple of years or so. Uh, and mostly as a turning point for it to really stick. If you take some of the my daily life right now, our daily lives as, a, uh, as an organization, or as a team, uh, everybody talks about the COVID patients, of course, uh, understandably so. But we are serving 800 million patients around the world. So that's a logistical supply chain challenge, especially when borders uh, have been uh, closed open around the world. So you can imagine the, um, the the velocity and the agility that it took for my teams to be able to, to put that up. At the same time, we have clinical trials running around the world where we have uh, now done more than 17,000 remote interventions to help patients who were not able to make it to the hospitals to be sure that they could secure their treatment. Things that we would have thought were never possible uh, up to four months ago uh, in the way that uh, medicine has been provided in that context. Uh, likewise, in research and development, you can see the world coming together. So it really has been an openness of open science, incredible collaboration across the world, uh, incredible acceleration as well. And finally, when you think about our go-to-market and launch, life continues and uh, we have a business to run, but this is clearly accelerating as well or as a catalyst for how we rethink about our go-to-market and engagement with patients in, in that context. Uh, and I'm fascinated, Bertrand, because it seems to me there are, there are two dimensions to this. One is uh, the foundations that were put in place, and I'm guessing those, those actions really getting accelerated, speeded up uh, under the current environment. And the other one, though, is, is new things that have had to happen, you know, completely new adjustments uh, and pivots that have happened because of the crisis. You mentioned the disruption to the supply chain, for example. We invest about 10 billion per year in R&D. Big piece of that goes into our running our clinical trials. Those are big processes, typically takes about 12 years and two and a half billion dollars to get a drug to market. So, and with a lot of those experiments, not necessarily going uh, all the way. And uh, so with massive investments behind. Up to probably two, three years ago, trials were largely run locally uh, with local data. So we spent a significant investment uh, pre-COVID of making sure that we had an harmonized setup, very agile product teams came into place. We've launched about eight, nine modules now with uh, 5,000 users on that on an harmonized platform that we call internally Nerve Live. And Nerve enables those teams, so those 5,000 uh, professionals, to be able to run those trials in a very cohesive way with predictive powers to know of where we at risk that the trial runs behind, where there's some patients that are at risk of not getting uh, the full service, where there's some lab supplies that are not coming at the right place, etc., etc. So having invested in that, Having invested in all the architecture as well that goes behind in terms of visibility of our data, the predictive power, the proper data science applied to that, that has enabled us, while we have those 5,000 working from home, or most of us working from home, to be able to administer those trials very efficiently, to make calls, to make uh, pivot locally, to readjust when a certain states in the U.S. was in lockdown, that we could actually pivot and adjust recruitment for patients at other places around the world as part of that. Just looking forward, do you see um, uh, any aspects of your digital strategy in any way changing? Clearly, uh, the word accelerant and catalyst has been used a lot across the world, certainly applies to us. I think, if anything, it will completely accelerate the path we were on. It will, um, but will stick to take some of the big lighthouses that we're driving, take some of the big partnership we have with Microsoft, with Amazon, with Tencent. Actually, this makes us even more fortunate to have those in place. Our appetite to go and work with tech partners will clearly, if anything, accelerate as well, because that's where many of the healthcare practitioners or patients have been migrating. So we need to be there. We need to be able to serve them in those places. But it will also create some pivots. It also creates some questions about our business models, about our go-to-market, about how can we use it differently. New players in town like telemedicine becoming real, whereas for 10 years they tried. Now, all, it's not just us. All the the ecosystem has come together. Regulators have clearly enabled those and have made a lot of very impressive move in that context. Doctors have changed behaviors in that context as well. So it's more than an accelerant. It's also how do we leverage uh, all of this in that context properly. Beyond that, you get talent. It's also 
um, a, a major accelerant as well for making sure now I have a huge belief that some of those challenges and pain points are, are too big for us only to take. So how do we make the best of our science expertise and the best of the talents we have combined with some of the best talents in the world? And we um, uh, did a report uh, that came out just this week where we interviewed 2,500 uh, tech professionals in a broad sense, from digital marketing to data science to AI to, uh, uh, to DevOps, and looking at what makes them tick and what and pre versus post COVID, what has been the behavior and the attitude towards towards healthcare. And interestingly, a couple of stats, if I may, we saw 86% of that cohort expressing a very strong interest about uh, joining healthcare uh, and the, the pharma business. Even more interestingly to me, we saw 70% increase, so 72% jump compared to six months ago. So it has really changed behavior, changed of saying, look, maybe I want to be part of that. Maybe I want to be <clears throat> one of the contributors to, to crack some of those uh, challenges that healthcare is facing. But at the same time, we saw 40% of them expressing a certain anxiety about, well, I'm not sure I understand the space. I've never done medicine. I don't understand that area. So uh, a lot of what we're doing now is also, that was a good insight for us to say, and I'm an example of that, coming from outside of the space and clearly having to learn fast, but for people who have the right curiosity are naturally attracted by those, those big challenges, that are naturally entrepreneurial by, by, by tendency, they don't need to understand medicine for that. The, the magic comes when you do the pairing of the best of science and the best of tech coming together. Mm -hmm. So I think there is a, a great moment in time as well for the talent out there. Is leadership, do you think, going to take a different view uh, on uh, on digital transformation uh, as a result of COVID? We already had a very supportive chairman from day one, very supportive CEO. We made it one of our five strategic priority. It's embedded. My objective are shared actually with the rest of the exco. So we have shared objectives around uh, digital as part of that. So that has certainly facilitated, facilitated things over the past uh, two years already. I would never have joined as well if those ingredients were not uh, properly met because those are pretty big challenges to, to take on. But yes, on top of that, I think this is accelerating. What sort of lasting changes uh, do you foresee taking place uh, in the aftermath of COVID-19 from a Novartis perspective? We've been one of the last industry, I mean, the industry that was protected from it for a very long time. But you remember when we, we talked two years ago, mm -hmm. that's when, when I was so attracted to join because this is the next frontier. This is the next big one that will actually clearly face digitalizations for the better. I mean, so I wanted to be a part of that. Uh, I loved as well the fact that it was a black canvas so for us to go and, and really shape that uh, as a team, that we could hire the right team that was actually for right fit as well uh, to, to really go after that. So if anything, uh, we've already planted a lot of the foundations in place. This has been two absolutely fascinating years and the pace at which we have been driving this, the type of investment that have been allocated. But now I'm, I'm getting out of bed actually super excited every morning. This remains the case, is it, that the talent uh, needed in a, in a frontier environment like, uh, like uh, healthcare is coming from either the, the more sort of traditional, shall we say, world of, uh, of consumer goods and services, uh, ones that have already been disrupted and are, in, are being disrupted by digitization and then the, the pure play world. Is that, is that broadly where the talent is coming from? It's really a mix, and I would add to that as well some startups. I would add some to that actually some institutions that have been very deep into specific topics as well. I, I'm a massive believer. We talk a lot about diversity uh, across the board, and which is clearly something in which we are very passionate about. But to me, true diversity is at the core of product teams. It's back to my old world at Amazon to some extent, or, or in tech. It's how do you really bring the best of uh, different disciplines together, break them down in teams that are nine, ten ish people, give them a real challenge, and then empower them, give them the resource, do the work for them on that front, but then get out of the way and let them go for that. If you take that approach, you quickly realize that you need multiple skills on that. So you need how do you pair a data scientist with a bench scientist, with a user experience person, uh, with a marketeer in those type of setup. And as long as you're clear about the goal they're going after, I, I generally believe that's that's where the magic happens. And any advice to um, uh, other chief digital officers out there um, in the middle of all of this? Uh, two or three sort of takeaways for them? I think we're all in this together, but maybe advice more, if I may, to to the maybe the broader audience who is thinking about, should I make those type of jump? Again, I come back to those stats about 86% being really attracted to the healthcare space, 72% increase over the last six months. 
but 40% wondering about, oof, would I be qualified to jump in there? My only advice would be only one, jump, jump, that we have some of the most important, the most impressive challenges that we have uh, in the world that we're taking on at a scale that is that I've never known before. It's way bigger than in, in retail, in entertainment and others. It matters and we need the very best brain for that. So jump would be my, my advice along those lines.